Last Man in Episode 70. Um, Brain Holpy Fuck, edition. I dropped that ball there hard. Yeah, that was bad. The whole beast. The whole beast. Number Brain. 70. We we had to do some research to see who's number 70. We had a tough time. <laughs> My first thought was John Albert, so you know what team I was. <laughs> oh, the Jets? Yeah. yeah. He wore 70? Yeah. He played a grand total of three games. <laughs> Remember? And had a goal. He went bar down on a breakaway his first game. Everyone <laughs> lost their shit, and they thought he was amazing. <laughs> was that, was <laughs> that this? Oh, no. I'm thinking Eric O'Dell. I remember his first inning show. Well, with the Jets when he got called off with us. But Buff sent him on, like, a breakaway just over the blue line against the Bruins, and he went bar down, like, on a quasi-breakaway. And everyone's like, oh, John Albert, baby. Buckle up. <laughs> and then he went back to the AHL, like, a week yeah, later. Exactly. Hey, John Albert is the captain of the Moose. So. This is true. Who are won three games all year, I think. <sighs> They're having a rough year. But light at the end of the tunnel, hopefully. Nonetheless, we got lots to talk about today. Um, we're going to talk about Dupuis retiring, Jets, Board of Governors meetings. Uh, we're going to talk about the Panthers. Obscure stat about our favorite defenseman for Carolina. Best guy ever. Um, a potential superstar going to Toronto via Twitter. Uh, the World Juniors, some milestones, your questions... And, of course, finish off with the election. I have it all written down, so we're not going to skip over anything. You didn't write down the minutes we're allowed to say. talk about it. I know. I, I'm like, I want to lot for everything. Perfect. I like it. I, I want to I try to tighten up the podcast. Let's do. Let's do like the, I don't know what you have for the time, but let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Pascal Dupuis officially retires, hangs up the skates from hockey due to health condition. We talked about him having blood clots last summer. Um... Very strict diet he had to be on. He literally had to eat the same food, same thing every day. Couldn't mix it up. Couldn't, you know, they asked him, oh, how often do you drink wine? He's like, well, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Well, do you want to drink a a glass of wine a day or do you not want to drink a glass of wine a day? And that was kind of how strict this diet he had to go on, but officially retiring, So he can't have a Klondike bar. They'd be like, what would you do for Klondike bar? Like... Well, I'd probably die, so I can't. <laughs> exactly. But I'll enjoy that's my mean. wine and that's rice. That's mm. Yeah, that's very mean. That, that, was, that was over the line. That's, that's not, that's not I'm nice. sorry, guys. <laughs> One of the most heartbreaking things about this was there was an interview with Sidney Crosby, and they asked him about it, and he's like, I won't be able to get through, like, talking about him and how, what he meant to me. He just He's like, I can't get through it. And he already started to tear up. Clearly, like, this guy was a mentor to one of the best players to ever play He's hockey. He's going to get hired on, right? As, like, a senior advisor or something? I'm only assuming so. Um, any, for anyone out there who follows me on Twitter, uh, they saw that I retweeted his tweet from November 11th, where he said, and this was, I guess, where the beginning of the end, hap- beginning of the end happened. Um, he said, family isn't important. It's everything. So he's clearly made this decision to say, I'm leaving hockey to be with my family. And that's a very smart decision. He's won a Stanley Cup, um, was the third guy on the Kunitz-Crosby line. One of the few players in Winnipeg Jets Atlanta Thrashers history to score a playoff goal. Really? What? Obscure stat that. Boom. Whoa. Whoa. The first Thrashers playoff game he scored. You know Dan's OG gangsta thrash fan when you pull stats like that out. I betcha. I'll never question Dan's fan of Peter Jackson Thrasher. He actually ended up in Pittsburgh with the Mar- in, in in the hostage trade. He was the other piece. He, this guy. Wow! Holy. See, this is this is why we have him. Yeah, this is why Dan is here. Except you know when when Pittsburgh lost in 08, he didn't jump ship. He stayed there. He's like, I'm playing with fucking Sidney Crosby. Of course, I'm staying here. And wins a cup the next year because oh, Hosa jumped shot ship. fired at Hosa, right? Yeah. Ah, Hosa's won three though, so. Now he has. Yeah, it worked yeah. out pretty good. He's three Wait, for, th- how many three for five now. He's been three for five. But not only that, he's been to the cup, what, five of the last seven years? No, five of the last eight years he's been to the cup. Final. There's one stat about Hosa I know, then. He sucks at golf. Just <laughs> awful at golfing. <laughs> I like how we go from Pascal Dupuis to just bashing on Marion Hosa. When you started this podcast off in such a somber mood, you got to lighten it up a little I know. Well, obviously. We're not about being somber here. We're about getting mad at each other. That's what we do. Yeah, exactly. Like how mad I was that the Jets lit up Garrett Sparks last Wednesday. During the podcast, Cam and I talked about it just a little bit. Um, The Jets absolutely spanked. Did you guys not like my tweet at the podcast? No, I didn't. Oh, I think I... 
I didn't see. Oh, well, I read it, but I didn't save it or anything. Well, you guys just you, you tweeted the link, titling it "Have the Leafs Found Their Future in Net?" And I said, "Nope." Jets debunked that myth pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. Geez. No. What happened was Dion Phaneuf decided to stop playing defense for a night. He got beat five times that night. I think. Is he me on the rinks? Like no, that'd be. 50 he's been times. very, very good this year, but that was a bad game for him. And then it's funny because, uh, they f- the to talk about the Leafs for a second. They followed up with a good effort against Minnesota and only lost one nothing. I don't blame that game on Garrett Sparks at all. Um, but tough in your second game when you do that. However, bright note: Connor Hellebuck in his second win in his what third game of his career? At second the, game at the time no, it was the second. He's played three now. And he's so is he 3-0? He's 3-0. Yeah. Oh, good for him. Does he have a nickname his, for him yet? His goals against average is like 9.67. <laughs> Does he have a nickname His yet? goals against average is 9.67. Sorry, save percent. <laughs> 9.67. You know, it took me forever. He's to, not Sergei Bobrovsky. It no. took me forever to figure out save percentage. I can move the decimal point two points over. I'm like, point nine six. what does it mean? And then I'm looking one day and I'm like, oh, like 96 points, <laughs> like, oh, it was so ridiculous. You're stupid. Does it kick? <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> leave, Does please, Connor Hellebuck have a game yet? Kindly remove yourself. What? No. Okay, when he has like a monster game, someone should just write like high, water, high waters in Winnipeg. Hell or high water? Come on. Hell, hell are you. Hell high... be, hella bucks saving it. Nailed it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Shooting out the hella bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dan just got to leave us. Must be Dan doesn't want to thing. jump in her hole and we keep digging her. Come on, Dan, it's fun down here. Come so on, yes, Dad. so two and zero gets a second win against Toronto. Then on Saturday, um, challenge date. Oh my god! <laughs> against stupid. Washington, Barry Trotz was very upset. That was a now, great challenge. First off, a terrible ben, challenge. interview. Before we get to that, I do yep. want to. Obviously, for no reason is any Washington Capital listening to this. But I do have to say thank you to the Washington Capitals team for, after their practice on Friday, there was a bunch of high school students uh, from Manitoba playing at the Iceplex. And these guys took time out of the day to take pictures with a bunch of uh, Manitoba high schoolers. Really? Yeah. A bunch of kids from Glenlawn. They're like, oh, I got to meet Ovi. I'm like, fuck you. I hate you so oh, much. Oh, I got a p- picture of Barry Trout. I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> so... <laughs> A little bright bright spot on that. So then Saturday night happens. Uh, Saturday afternoon. Sa- Saturday afternoon. Pardon me. It was it was hockey. It was hockey day. Or it was like hockey, hockey afternoon night, and hockey night afternoon in Canada. Where yeah. like the Jets game started at two. And it, it felt more like a mid April game if you were outside in Winnipeg because it was like four degrees outside. It still does. I want snow real bad. Yeah. And you know what's awesome? Seeing your team win three times in one day. As a goal. Because they awarded them the game three times. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, I know exactly where Dan's going with this. Oh I my totally God. missed that. That was stupid. So, talk about it. Were you at the game, Dan? I was not. I watched it on okay. TV. Well, but if people ever want to know why the challenge is going to be ridiculous at some points, this is example A. It's we need a awful. camera like you in the imagine? boards facing the blue line, like the opposite blue it, line, a laser. It's going to come. You watch. It now, to. I don't... I'm not, like, I'm not going to get ahead of myself here, but... Washington Winnipeg Cup final. Imagine if this is a Stanley Cup final game, game seven in overtime, and that's how it's settled. Who wins uh, that? Well, oh, does they, that mean it goes back game seven to Washington? No, it doesn't mean anything. It means that that's the way the goal that's scored Stanley off Cup. of. Oh, you said that controversial? Yeah, game seven. And the Jets win. Yeah, off of that. Like obviously we're we're happy, but how much of a that is foot in the crease level the for Lindy, I, for Buffalo Sabers here. The problem I had with it is. Like, Wheeler's skate very well could be off the ice. That was Shepard. But No, it was Wheeler. On, was it Wheeler? On the offside. Yeah, yeah. But oh, well, I'm stupid. I always thought it was The rule is, and the rule oh. is, unless it's conclusive, you can't overturn exactly. your call. And it wasn't conclusive. They looked at it for 20 fucking minutes, and, and it like, wasn't oh, conclusive. I don't know how much money so the NHL makes. I, I understand, like, it's the games on the line, but at that point, if you can't tell, you can't tell. And like, it's one it's, point for oh. Washington, a team that's at the top of the East right now. Like, so, it's one point. I just want to say further review when they're reviewing it, which I, I don't know if we're going to talk about Barry Trotz's interview, but like the, sure. the linesmen we were, review, were reviewing it like on an iPad, yeah, basically. And 
He said, like, in his interviews, like, yeah, well, if games are going to be decided on an iPad, maybe we should invest more into this league. He's totally right, though. Not even just the iPad. The camera. What kind of potato quality is that? Yep. My camera could film better quality than, like, when they're like, oh, here's super slowed down, zoomed in. And it's like, you're watching, like, gray specks move on the screen. It's awful. That's could why they, not, they should put I'm cameras surprised on the board. Yeah, could they not put cameras on the boards? It wouldn't cost that much money. I'm surprised money. the people in Toronto are not, are not the ones that look at it. I thought, I was, thought they went to Toronto. I, I but they, they, they had the same angle, so it's like, eh, it's not going to... Exactly. They're allowed to ask access to every camera like that's in that's filming it from every broadcast. Yeah. But every angle, like there always seems to be an angle that missed. Like the most infamous one off my mind would be Calgary Game Six. Yes, yeah. but so. even even the TV announcers were like, "Okay, this is getting kind of dumb." <laughs> like this, <sighs> it was a little bit of ridiculous. Like, so but nonetheless, they uh, they awarded them the game three times. Yeah, they did. It was funny so, watching it on TV where it's like. The Jets win. Well, Barry Trotz are challenging it. And it's like, oh, the Jets win again. No, hold on. He's still saying something. Yeah, the lines may not coming in. Let's see what Paul Maurice yeah. thinks. He yeah. can't fucking make that yeah. call. Yeah. Oh. Don't fucking make that. You read his, like, it shows, like, Trotz. He's just so stoic and mad. And it shows Maurice, don't you fucking make that call. Like, you read his lips. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> he was not happy. So, Winnipeg takes that very emotional win. Triumphant win over one of the best teams in the East to play a very strong team in the West, Chicago, the next night, and put Hutchinson in, a goalie that has their number, and unfortunately lose a very close game, a one goal game again. The tough thing is they lost, the game winning goal was a softie. Which Sorry, hurts. it wasn't a one goal game. Which but. hurts. And Patrick Kane extended his point streak on an empty netter and then extended it again on another empty netter, which was also his. Six hundred. That was the point. best way to extend it, though. Yeah. We were batting it down in the zone, and I'm like, "Does that that does does that count?" And I'm like, "He was at the defensive zone. He did it. He, he did it." And then they show Bobby Hall, and that guy, he's getting up there. Mm-hmm. That guy's old. He's very young. Well, when his son is fifty now, yeah. No. I mean, you're probably old too. True. So, just Brett so Hall probably has kids that are my almost dad having is, kids. Brett Hall could be our dad. It's true. Come on. So Steve Eiserman um, could be our dad. Steve Eisenman is our dad. Connor Hellebuck stats. Dad? Granted, he's played three games. But his his save percentage is 965, and his goals against is .97. Now, I want to ask he's this question. He's played three games. I know. I want to ask this question. But he's played three games against Washington, Minnesota, and Toronto, which, I mean, two of the three teams are pretty pretty darn good. Is Connor Hellebuck this year's Hutchinson, and is Hutchinson this year's Pavlik to last year, where... The team plays a lot harder in front of Pavlik versus the way the team plays in front of Hutchinson. I would say, oh, to a certain extent, yes. I think they feel more confident playing in front of Hellebuck. I don't think they feel confident playing in front of Hutch, which because to your he's credit had, is what they did last year with Pavlik. So. Um, but then ever yes. since Pavlik took the reins back before playoffs, Hutchinson's had that kind of bruised yeah. ego. Yeah. It's also his second year as an NHL goalie, and goalies are voodoo. As we know. True. So, two of three last week, not a bad thing. They only play two games this week, I believe, right? Thursday uh, and... Uh, Thursday, Friday. Thursday, Friday? Oh, Thursday, they're, they're Friday, They're back yeah. in Chicago on Friday. Yeah. Yay old madhouse. And again. they might play on Sunday. And Patrick Kane could extend his streak to 24 games. He could. <laughs> Come on, baby. Unless his his streak is almost as long as Golden State's winning streak at the start of this NBA season. Isn't that crazy? Neither can stop scoring or losing. <laughs> if one of them goes down, the other one goes down. And Friday will be interesting because they'll play Brian Bickle. Or, or, or maybe not. Hey, I just want to note on that. You guys, That wasn't that big of guys, a hit. Did you guys not? Did you guys hear that quote from Maurice after the game? No, I, I didn't, didn't hear what, what happened. Because Bickle, Bickle just got called up for that game from the yeah, AHL. He, he has been down there all year, which I didn't think he had been. Um, but they asked him like about the hit. And then he like he like kind of tongue-in-cheekly, Maurice is like, well, we're going to see him again on Friday. Or maybe not. Like, kind of like, uh, like a pause, and he's like, maybe not. Well, Brian That's Mickle, a, uh, just off yeah. that Buffett real quick. Buff wasn't looking, turning the other way. Clean hit. Just caught him off guard. He didn't, I didn't think it was that big of a hit. I didn't think it warranted the reaction Buff did, but it's very rare that Buff gets knocked down. So, for the, sure, the I problem, would do something The too. problem with the hit oh, is it. that sho- it, it was sho- like there was shoulder to head contact. So, I can see why Buff was not happy because he did get hit in the head. Yeah, yeah. His helmet but I mean, it's, yeah. it, it's not a. It wasn't a big hit. If, it was blue line. If Buffett's anything, turning this he, way and he just. If anything, you can argue it was a blindside hit a little bit, but it was it was nothing. It wasn't that bad. 
They both. I, I don't think Buff okay. like getting a shoulder to the face. That's what I don't think he liked. And it's right, how right, right, I mean, little. it's very similar to the Gallagher hit that Buff threw. Like there's there's shoulder to head contact, but and Bickle's not. one of the few guys in the league who's actually big <laughs> enough to be able to get a shoulder at Buff's head. Now here's the other thing too: is that Bickle maybe making a statement to the team like, "This is why I'm here. I can compete with a guy like Dustin Bufflin. Keep me here." I didn't. Wow. I didn't see the hit. I didn't watch the game because I had no, other obligations. If Buff had been looking, it would have been a different story. Obviously, but you know what I'm saying is yeah. that's something that Brian Bickle can bring because that was what Bufflin did to Philadelphia in the 2010 Stanley Cup. Was he totally eliminated Chris Pronger because Chris Pronger was just like play the Montreal Canadiens in the Eastern Conference semifinals or Eastern Conference finals. He's like <laughs> he's got three of them in one hand, one in the other. <laughs> Look at it! He's just smashing them together. He's using them as symbols. Just, <laughs> yeah. That's the only story. He's stealing pucks left and right. He's like, that's my puck. That's my puck. Everybody gets a puck. Sorry. Whenever you bring up Chris Pond, you got to go exactly the other That's exactly how it went. <laughs> Fact. Fact. And this guy uh, is our discipline leader still now. still think Brian Bickle is the biggest waste of $4 million bucks I've ever seen in my life, but... Hey! Hey! How dare you do that to the Flyers, Vincent LeCavalier? At least Bickle gets a play every once. Let's put it this way: <laughs> If Anthony Peluso had a good playoff run, and you guys won the cup. Would you give him four million bucks here? Because that's what Chicago did with Brian Bickle. Now, Peluso, but Bickle got similar to play player. With True, similar player. I guys, a little bit, a but, think about it this way though: both Brian Bickle and Vincent LeCavalier could leave their teams in the expansion draft. Something discussed at this year's Board of Governors meeting. True. Vincent LeCavalier will be the captain of the Las Vegas team. <laughs> you can quote me on that. The high one. If he's that in that team. Called? I think they're called the, the Black they're, Knights, I heard. The Black Knights. That's racist. You should see their mascot. <laughs> 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 it's just. Uh, this guy comes uh, his it's face Ro- covered no. in shoe shine. No, it's Robert Downey Jr. from Tropic Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I sound like Bo Cosby? Nippers are both pudding pops. <laughs> no, uh, so, I know who I am. <laughs> Sorry. So, party governors meetings uh, were held the last few days. One of the biggest topics: expansion. Um, the oh, can we not talk about that? How he's friggin' tearing it up. We will. Year? We're Dan leading into it. Teasing, you son of a beezy. Dan, we're leading into Lee Stepney. You're a monster. You calm your shit. Well, you just gave it away. Yeah, but you can't point at the paper and be like, can we talk about that? Nobody <laughs> on the podcast knows I'm pointing at the paper. But you said it. You're like, well, hey, what it's is- in the order. We'll touch on it later. God. Okay. Expansion. We wrote an order for the podcast, which is not the order we're following. So let's just clear that up. It's a Tarantino movie. We've yeah. talked about this. Do you want to bring up Katy Perry again, Dan? <laughs> no. <we're not>. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it again if we have to. Um, salary cap rising, potentially. Yeah. And the <sighs> executive... Com- uh, com- the executive pick, I can't say... Com- the executive compensation, compensation policy? Compensation policy mm-hmm. has now been revoked. Good, because that was stupid. Yeah. There's only five in league history, and there's an article... Seven. Five. Seven. Five. Seven. Six. Fine, six. <laughs> we'll cut either. Meet in the middle. There's an article written on it on sportsnet.ca by Steve Dangle. That was Twinkle corrected Link. from five to seven. Oh, was it? God yeah. damn it. So there's six. <laughs> we'll meet you halfway. It was six. <laughs> six. Six and 99. But... Seven, okay. So it was stupid. It was a stupid rule, so they got rid of the stupid rule. Um, but the biggest topic, of course, uh, on hand was salary cap and expansion. So I want to touch on salary cap first. Salary cap right now is, what is it, just hovering around $70 million? 71.4. Perfect. They're saying it could raise up to 74.4. Yeah. This, with the dollar, the Canadian dollar, hitting its lowest mark since the, ni- the early 2000s, I believe. Lowest mean we don't have a lot of money? Means this is our lowest value in a long time. Oh, okay. If you trade in one dollar Canadian, you get seventy three cents American. Exactly. Oh, that's so. so you want to go to the states soon? Don't. I probably shouldn't have bought a couple of things online. Eh? Then I thought I was getting a deal. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so what does this have to do with the the? Pay? So it's very interesting that they're raising it through potentially raising it three million dollars, but the other interesting thing that goes along with this is the fact that. Imagine how much more it could be if the Canadian dollar was stronger. Because if you have a stronger Canadian dollar, then those deals from Rogers and obviously TSN and those other TV deals that are out there 
would hold more weight and would th- thus be able to push the salary cap higher than that. So we're taught, like, that $100 million number for 2020 or 2025 that they're talking about might not actually be that far away if the Canadian dollar actually strengthens a bit. Maybe a dumb question. Do, yeah. the, do the Canadian teams pay their players in American money? Um, you have to pay your yeah. teams in American So money. Dustin yeah. Bufflin's getting 575 American. Yeah. So they're actually paying them, like, $7 million. Let's put this into probably. perspective. Yeah. I just did it quick on my phone. $71.4 million. Uh, U.S. right now is 96.77 Canadian million. Yeah. So almost 100 million. However, and this is why we have the strongest franchises in Canada is because they're able to pay this out. It, it's not hard. Um, this probably, well, gate, uh, for the but, Jets, gate alone probably covers maybe just under half. Exactly. Which is and, not that much, but it's still real good. Exactly. Uh, the other thing, too, is if you look at that, like that number we're talking like, Potentially another two, three million dollars if the Canadian dollar is strong, even if it's trading at like eighty five cents per US dollar, so that's an extra twelve cents. Like that number goes from being whatever, seventy one point four you said it's almost a hundred million, probably drops to about ninety. So they're saving that much money by the dollar rising by that. So So when it's even, that's real good for Canada. They're like Well, it's real good for Canada. It's not remember like five years ago when our dollar was actually lower than the American? It's you mean uh, higher. higher than the American. Yeah, stronger. So if you gave them a dollar American Canadian, you actually get like a dollar or something. Yeah, it was great. So that's when Canadian teams were strongest, but that's also when we saw lockouts. It was in yeah. 2004, and then once again in 2013. So, so what, the high, it, it seems the higher the Canadian dollar is trading, obviously, it's not the strength of the economy, right? And the U.S. isn't as strong when the Canadian dollar is doing well because less people are able to spend money, less people are go to games, so then they have this argument, right? Don't want to talk about all that financial stuff. Let's move to the expansion where... They're taking a serious look at this, and they're saying the biggest obstacle right now is the expansion draft. So, uh, it's because they have to find a way for the Players Association to meet on neutral ground and say, okay, this is how we want to protect players. These are players that will allow to go. Is this an avenue for players with bad contracts that are buried in the NHL, a la Vincent LeCavalier, Brian Bickle, is this their chance to play again in the NHL? Yes, 100%. Or even players on... Contracts buried in the AHL, like obviously. Bur- well, Bickle. that's what I mean. Oh yeah, De- oh, and then and then you have guys like Lee Stepniak, which was a player I wanted to lead into, playing unbelievable. Barely made an NHL team this year. He was signed on a PTO to New Jersey. Winnipeg said, "No, we don't want you. We want to go young." And he has Big not mistake. only played beyond what he did last year, but playing <clears throat> above anyone's expectations, even New Jersey's. Um, he gets a more permanent position in an expansion league and maybe gets a little bit more money. It, now, I know we've talked expansion extensively on here. Um, I'm not for it. I'm sure you guys are around that same thought. With the expansion draft, how do you think players should be protected? What, what should you be allowed to be protected? Um, will this give room for more players to come in the league and prove themselves? Because, you know, I talked about how the re- biggest reason why I'm against it is it can dilute the talent pool. However, guys like James Reimer and guys like Ben Scrivens, like these goalies that are good goalies, would have a chance to be able to start on another team. You want to make it interesting? Okay. You protect one goalie. Okay. You protect four defensemen. Two of them can be over $5 million, two of them have to be under $5 million cap hit. Mm-hmm. You can protect six forwards, three of them can be over $5 million cap hit, three of them have to be under $5 million cap hit. That's not bad. That's not bad. Now, here's... Oh, because meant, because okay. if you keep six, you're going to keep your top six, your best six forwards, yeah, right? so then... But if you have to do two above, two, two below... This was something but, but where I could... One. If... Now, this is a question I have for both of you. <clears throat> um, I know, Cam, you didn't answer my previous question, but... Is this potentially, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Devastating. Uh, no, a strategy the GMs could use. <laughs> what were you going with? I don't know. I wanted to get okay. ruin the game. No. <laughs> uh, can Do you think GMs are going to employ a strategy where they sign guys f- that they want for three years but want seven years and don't protect them in the draft, hoping that they'll get taken away? a la Dustin Bufflin. You sign him for that seven-year contract, you get those three great years out of him. You, they, the expansion team sees how good that he is, and they're like, oh, he didn't. they didn't protect him? They protected Jacob Truba and Josh Morrissey instead? Well, let's grab Dustin Bufflin. Let's grab Toby Enstrom. 
is that a ploy that GMs are going to use? Sign these guys for a little bit longer to get their best years from them, too. When you started Maybe. talking about that, Maybe. I'm pretty sure he just got off the phone with uh, Ron Hextall and or Paul Holmgren. Or Lou Lamorello. Or what Lou are Lamorello, <laughs> either way. Lou Paul Lou. Oh, yeah. Is that what they call him? Yeah. Lou Paul. Well, I guess he did sign that coach. <laughs> yeah, but his freaky fake old man teeth, like... Oh, yeah, we love Ilya Kovachak over in New Jersey, like where he talks. Um, yeah, you know what? That's a really... If they had that rule, 100%. And while you're talking about that, uh, Philadelphia, actually, it was like <laughs> pretty much every forward has a contract like that. So maybe they're thinking ahead of time. Uh, I didn't even think about it that way, though. That's a real... For a dad that's, said, that's really like, good. Pick your cap hit, I thought but... you were talking about just like, oh, you can't be... You, you're allowed to protect everyone under 23 prospect lists. Like, are your prospects lists... Like, are they untouchable? Are you allowed to draft I, guys like that? How does that Because it would work? pretty much ensure that everyone's best defenseman, best forward, best goalie they can keep, which is fair. It's basically like fantasy hockey. But say if you're Dallas... Real people. Say if you're Dallas, you have to pick between... Jamie Benn, Tyler Sagan, Patrick Sharp, Jason Spezza. Like, you have to... Valerie Nyachushkin at that well, point. Well, maybe. He's on their fourth line. He's kind of buried there right He now. actually, they just put him on their first. Did they? Yeah, okay. he's on like his first. But, team. I mean, that, that team's going to have to pick, right? Yeah. A team yeah. like Chicago, you got Keith Seabrook, you got... Who else do they have over there? But, I mean, you said two and two, right? So, Tech, I mean... You can oh, keep Kane, you can keep Kane, those Kane, high Kane, echelon guys. Tosa. But it's, you also... It's like the mid-range, and then, yeah. like, one high guy might go. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, you know... And it gives and it gives Winnipeg the opportunity. Let's say with that five million dollar rule, you can keep Little Wheeler. You know, I wouldn't even say Lad. Let's say Shifley at this point. Those are the three you keep. Then the, your lower guys, you can keep the Cops, the Perros, and um, Ealers. Ealers, obviously, yeah. But the other thing too, though, is they might be like, "Okay, if the guy's in the AHL, he's untouchable." We'll. P- Maybe the other thing, too, is they'll submit what players... Maybe it'll be like, okay, our expansion draft is you're allowed to pick from these 12 players, and that's it. Because they did it in the CFL recently, the Canadian Football League, when Ottawa, Red Blacks, got their team name. And, I don't know, it's an interesting take. I really like what you said, though, Dan. That's really a decent way to look at it. It's interesting, because you're guaranteed some good players are going to be available. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also potential for some interesting contracts. But the other thing, too, though, is if you think about it, most of these teams are going to have a hard time hitting the cap floor, which means they're going to have to pick up some of those bad contracts, which in the end could be a good thing. Moving on, though, um, with expansion talk, obviously, the one thing that's not even talked about is the health of some of the lower revenue teams. Florida Panthers this week got a vote in their... I guess... County. Yeah, county vote to pay off some of the debt from the team. You know, it wasn't unanimous, but it was, they won the vote. Five to three, yeah. Yeah. I'm just wondering, they, to pay off the debt so they now are debt-free? Or? So I think it's just to cover overall year-to-year losses for Florida. So they have a projection of how much losses they're going to have, and the city says, yes, we'll cover them for this amount they of time. They got 86 million bucks for the next, like, yeah. seven or eight years or something. Mm-hmm. So it ensures that the team is going to stay there long term, how or for the midterm. However, we're not really sure their long term outlook, considering the fact that if this keeps happening in places like Arizona and Florida, Carolina, Carolina, yeah, what what's going to happen? Like, don't before we look at expansion, don't we have to look at having healthy franchises? All I'm going to say is I've seen pictures of the Panther games this year, re, like t- attendance, and as someone who watched Thrasher games. They don't even get as much as the, as, the, as the Thrashers were getting. Like, it's bad. But also, remember at the start of last season, they decided to sit for... They're saying, True. Yeah. we're charging everyone. Full it's price. not fair that a season ticket holder that pays 150 bucks a game yeah. is sitting beside someone who got tickets for free walk-up because they won a contest. Or but it's, it, it looks so bad. When I know, it, but... When you have a 21,000, they have a big arena. Yeah. And it's... You can't even get 5,000 people at your game, like... Yep. I mean, it just looks bad at that point. Well, no, oh, this is also a franchise, Florida, at least, that when the glass is broken, <laughs> they put, put plywood. <laughs> it wasn't plywood. They just couldn't get the cover off, so they yeah. left it. <laughs> so is this maybe an idea for the NHL? And I don't know if I've talked about this on a previous podcast. 
Um, if I have, please let me know in the comments. Um, is this something for them to say, okay, we're putting this expansion talk out there to see strengths of markets so we can look at maybe saying, okay, we're going to move the unhealthy franchises first, then expand. So if we have four places teams can go, we'll move those two most unhealthy places. We'll move them to where they need to go. You know, you could move Arizona to Las Vegas, Florida to Quebec. Fucking Quebec. I think such at, a good team. I, I, I think at this point, it's I'd say Carolina and Florida, the two teams go. Yeah. Because I don't think Arizona, there's too much invested in the Coyotes to move them. Okay. And Carolina is apparently not doing very well at all in terms okay. of fans. Even though they have an exciting team to watch. Wow. They also, this is a first That team year. could look very different Didn't in a few months, new- too. Yeah, because they're talking about fire sale and everyone. Didn't yeah. they get new ownership recently? Because yeah. I was reading about just regarding the Florida deal, like it, it led me into an article about how they decided a couple years ago to say no, we're charging like these are prices. That's too bad. We're not giving away thousands of tickets anymore. We're giving away like comping this many. Carolina, this is the first year they decided to do that. They're only comping six hundred and fifty tickets a game. That's like workers at the arena. Mm-hmm. That's family. That's visiting team. That's media. Whatever. Only six hundred and fifty before like. Back in the day, they said they'd comp as many as 3,000 tickets at a Carolina crazy. game. 3,000, that's like um, that's almost a third of the MTS. But I mean, 10 years ago, for a four or five year span, they were selling every game. Well, I mean, think about it though, because they, they, they had a good team. They, they, they had won the cup, cup. They went to the final couple. Like They probably out. Before. They had a bigger attendances than probably Chicago and Boston at that. Or for sure, Chicago. Chicago Pittsburgh get, is it one I'm thinking At of. that time, Chicago was getting less people than yeah. the Mantle and Moose. Yeah. But here's here's the scary thing that you're 3, saying is you're saying 3,000 tickets. If you're just charging 30 bucks a ticket, that's 90 grand a game. That you could be making. That you're losing out on. Oh, that you're losing out on. That you're just giving away. You're saying, I don't need that 90 grand. And that's saying those tickets are thirty dollars. Not saying those tickets are a hundred dollars. And it's three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And it doesn't help that these franchises are mediocre year after year too. Yeah. It doesn't help. You know the Jets can get away with it because they're in a hockey market, but you saw when that team was in Atlanta, they were mediocre and no one cared. And mm-hmm. with when you have a mediocre you know? team with your prospects, you rush them in. They don't pan out as much. I'll just use the example. Uh, Burmistra. Yeah, useless. perfect. That's what I was going to actually. Like, be, uh, well, I wouldn't say useless, but because of they, because they kind of stunted his progress. He has so much talent, he does absolutely nothing on the ice. It's just basically the, the most yeah, frustrating thing to three watch. Three straight years in a row, they put, oh my they put uh, Bogo Kane, Burmy, first round picks, straight in. I would say, I would argue Bogo is probably ready. Kane could have used another year. Burmy probably could have used at least another two years. But because they, 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 they had to do marketing. They had to do what they had to do to get fans, and obviously didn't work out. But that's what happens in, in markets like that. But and so the whole, the whole thing Carolina sucks. has the all-star defenseman, Justin Falk. True. He does. We rag on him, but hey. How good has he been this season, Daniel? Pretty darn good. How many power play goals does he have? He has 11. How many goals does Alexander Ovechkin have? 13. Yep. Wait, what? What? Ovi's got 13 goals and a Falk. How many goals does Justin Falk have? 11. <laughs> and they're all power play goals? Yes. What? <laughs> yep. He oh. set the, he set the uh, Hurricanes team record for 10, and then he scored his 11th like five minutes after that in the game last night where they almost came back against Dallas. What's the. Well, that was so funny. They, they were down 5 1 against Dallas going into the third period. They lost 6 5, and they only lost because the Dallas scored with like 10 seconds left. <laughs> And I'm yeah. fi- <laughs> the all-star, the best Justin part- Falk. You know who has three goals this year? Ron Hainsey. <laughs> you know who's got one goal this year? Jakob Voracek, come on! Now, let me tell you <laughs> You know who has four goals this year? Chris Thorburn. You know who has not many more than four goals? Sidney Crosby. <laughs> you know what? I just want to put a note on that Carolina-Dallas game from last night. Anti Niemi got a win for not facing a shot and I'm playing Dan this week in fantasy and I have Anti Niemi. Nice! Yeah. Woo! Um, Except that was a big fuck you to me because Tyler Sagan scored the game winning uh, goal and guess who was Tyler Sagan? Dan. But I have Jamie Ben. So move. we just like fed off Your each other move. all night. <laughs> Your move. What's the record for playoff power play goals? Sorry, power play goals in a regular season. By defenseman 19, Sheldon Surrey, 2006-7. I saw that. Was he on Anaheim or you was guys, he in Montreal? Ducks, okay. ducks. Are we going to have a, a fiesta when Falk hits 19 power play goals? What are you bringing? Well, how come it's always blizzard me? Cake. We're getting a blizzard <laughs> cake. I'll go happy on the blizzard cake. We're doing Perfect. it. Perfect. Done. Deal. Justin or do Falk. we do treats of pizza? 
Well, we did the treats and pizza last Blizzard time. Cake. Blizzard, Blizzard cake. Blizzard cake. Deal. And on it, we say... Justin the All-Star. Fa- the All-Star Justin Falk. The All-Star Justin did it. Falk, yeah. Did it. Did it. Did it. He did it. He did it. So yeah. when he makes the All-Star game this year, we're not going to laugh. No, because no, he, he is actually... an All-Star. He's earned yeah, it now. Clearly. We have to find a new Wait. All-Star, and that will not be John Scott, because he is an All-Star. That is bullshit. Shut up. I know you've been voting. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> quick quick question. The second I saw that, I went online. I'm like, Anthony Peluso, Chris. <laughs> 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 All right, let's Enter, do this. Delete, delete. <laughs> um, Justin Falk. What nationality is he? Is he American. Be? American. So is he on the American team for the World Cup? He's on the How under, old is he? Under 23, maybe? I he's not know. under 23. He's probably 25. Oh, he, well, he was, at the, he was at the Olympics anyway. On the Olympics? Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, he's, he was on the Olympics sure. to begin with. So, okay. Yeah. He was he'll the Blake Wheeler of defense. <laughs> he was there, but he played like probably two minutes a game. <laughs> he learned a lot. Those plays that he said on the bench. No, I learned a lot. <laughs> I'm There's a lot of things to yeah. learn out there. I saw Phil Kessel. <laughs> hey, you shake your head now, but Blake Wheeler would be on that team any any day now, I think. Well, yeah, very nah, much I'm so. He's sure 23 on the dot, so he won't be on Ooh. the... Oh, no, it's your age no. as of, sep- I think, like September 1st yeah. of next season. He's only 23? Mm-hmm. And he's this good? He will be he's 24 in... in you. He'll be 24 in March. How did we... Like, I always thought he was actually a lot Carolina. better. Because he's in We don't hear about him. There's a lot of great <laughs> Is there players Justin around. Falk that played for the Rangers or played for the Wild? He did, both. Both, yeah. Justin Falk, F-A-L-K. Oh. Does Cameron have a signed book oh. by him? He does. <laughs> yeah. When I... Fun fact. Sure. When um, there was like... Uh, it was a Wednesday. No, you know what it might have been. Like, it was in the middle of the week. It was at the Iceplex. It was like a charity hockey game where Taze Richards, a yeah. bunch of guys were there, and it's like, pay one dollar, get a signed puck by a mystery guest, and I'm like, come on, Richards, two two or Taves, Justin, who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> like as he skates by, he's like, hi. <laughs> yeah, so I'm still relevant. It's like getting a signed puck from Cam Barker. That was the other guy I got that day. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, I'll bring. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I will bring Perfect. both of them next podcast. I have both a puck. Right. <laughs> God damn you. Steven Stamkos favored a tweet from TSN Sports saying that he would like to go to the Leafs. Stevie's coming, then baby. Then said, well, I was just scrolling through, I accidentally liked it. No, you didn't, Stevie. You didn't. You want to go. Now, let's talk about this in a realistic way. He wants way. to go? I don't know about that. Would you... If you're Steven Stamkos, would you not even want to know how much you could get from a team like Toronto, or any team for that matter? Do you think he cares more about where he goes or how much money he's making? I think it's it's a bunch of factors, bunch. but the main factors are the amount of money he's going to get, the situation that that team is in, and the future and chance odds are odds that he will be able to win a cup again. Well, you've got William Nylander right now, who's a point per game player. In the AHL. In the AHL. You He's have actually Mitch leading the AHL on points. points. You have Mitch Marner, Marner. who's... <laughs> go. I think, the, I think he's got 47 points. He's in... leading the OHL in points. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. So you have two guys leading leagues in points. Um, you've got Garrett Sparks, who seems to be something. James Reiner playing hey, on top of this game. can't start a fire without a spark, am I right? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Easy. He's played like three games. Hey, you're... Everyone in... starts summer. There comes a moment. <laughs> Never had a plan. To believe in the power of... Being me and being me and 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 me Oh, man. I want to make one episode. <laughs> where I don't say it. Once where you don't say It's not going to happen. But all I'm saying is... Is this... Now, obviously, as a Leaf fan, I might be dreaming. But for both of you guys, do you see the possibility of Stamco signing somewhere other than Tampa Bay? Yes. I think yes. at this point I think he's gone. I What have, makes you think that? Uh, oh, there's all these rumblings that he doesn't get along with the coach and there's been no progress on contract talks and I mean at this point like He's not even playing his natural position. If he's not if he's not signed in February, you have to move. Him. You have no choice. Do you well, yeah, you got to no, no, You can move him at drafting. Do you see? This is what I'm thinking. But they're Tampa Bay. They're right. They're they're right around where the Jets are right now. They're not doing very well. Yes, but the advantage Granted. that Tampa Bay has, that the Jets don't. Tampa's in the East. When you win a few games in the East, string a few wins together, you can move up a lot faster on that ladder than in the West, yep. especially in the Central True. in the West. <laughs> <laughs> you could go 16 and 0 in the West, and you're like, oh hey, I'm in the. Damn no. it, I'm still a point out? Come on. I mean, we're, s- we're six <laughs> points ahead of both Vancouver and L.A., but and L.A.'s leading the playoffs. Pacific. Yeah. Could you imagine if every central team was ahead of any Pacific team? 
It's going to happen. A team, a good team, always misses the playoffs every year. And that could very well be the Jets this year. Because right, that makes no, right now they're in that spot. It doesn't per- personally. It doesn't make sense to me why you have this restriction on saying, "Oh no, we need it for division." It doesn't make any sense. You want to see the best teams in the playoffs. Well, that's Take the, the top format. eight. They're... Take the top eight. I don't yeah. fucking care if seven of the top eight are from the same division. They're the best fucking top eight that there is. So realistically, I'm with sorry, yeah, Greg on this go one. Go no, ahead. No, no, realistically, no, no, that's no, it. No. I'm with Greg on that one. I was just gonna say, what what are possible Stamkos destinations? Like, where is he gonna end up? They're talking he, Toronto. He's gonna want a big contract. Twelve million dollars, Toronto. Yeah. Okay. Eight who, years. Who has the assets to get him? Uh, ooh, go ahead. I have three theories Philadelphia. on this. No. no. <laughs> if he's getting traded... Calgary. If he's getting traded, I think there's only one team in the East that has the money to do it. I don't know if they have the assets. If, if they're trading him. Because this is, my, this is my theory. They'll be able... To, they have a good enough team to make the Stanley Cup Final. They might... It's a long road, but they could do it. They have to beat, obviously, the Rangers and the Habs off the top of my head. I think they're going to... This is my theory. They're going to hold on to him, use him for this playoff run, see if they can win a cup out of him, and then beca- hypothetically if they win the cup, okay, and he plays a role in it. His value will be high. It's already ridiculously high anyways because it's Stamkos. There's only one team they're trading. If they're going to trade him, they want to go west. Why would you want to trade in your conference? That's ridiculous. But if they have to trade east, there's only one team in my mind that can make it happen. It's Toronto because they have the money, but not necessarily the prospects, but they could work something out. They'll probably be willing to deal with their first. Or, yeah, it's got to be out. It's going to be huge. Teams in the West, there's only two teams in mind that make sense to me that have the money and the pieces to make it happen. Right. Both of them in Alberta. Both of oh, them in Alberta. Really? Think I, about it. They all have uh, young assets and uh, they all have the money. I was gonna. That's not, just my mind. If, if I was I'm gonna going, honestly say the Jets have the pieces to get it done, I'm not saying they're gonna. Are they gonna drop like? But they have the money what? as well. They have the money and they have the prospects to do it. True. Here's the other thing. Another team that I, I could, they would have the money if they moved the players. Colorado. Oh yeah, that's another one too. True. They That'd be a third team. Yeah. They could move Matt Duchesne. Their their top line could essentially be Steven Stamkos, Gabriel Landeskog. Nate McKinnon. Fucking Nathan McKinnon. Yeah. And then they, and they could even move, move the right players. They could move their first, Duchesne and Miko Ranton in if they wanted to. Or even their first... Tyson no, Berry. Their first, exactly. Matt Duchesne, Tyson Berry. And are you telling me Tyson Berry won't sign in Tampa Bay? Are you telling me Matt Duchesne won't take a role to play in Tampa Bay? That's true. The, will, only, the only issue we'd have would be he'd have to fight Tyler Johnson for that number nine. That's will okay. will Would Stamkos go to Colorado? That's the thing. No, and then that that's the fa- that's that's what it's we're all like, trying to figure why out. Would, is the factors? It's just of, like would he go? Would he go to Winnipeg? Would he go to Edmonton? I mean, he's Canadian. He doesn't seem to really have a problem playing in Canada. Um, but I mean, the other thing too, it's we talked about it earlier in the podcast. The Canadian dollar not as high as the American dollar. The other problem. Taxes in the U.S. a lot lower than they are in Canada. Uh, he actually gets tax free right now. Exactly, he's in Florida. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, just a, just a little thing to talk about yeah, to mention. It's uh, it's interesting. So that's that's something that we'll obviously follow all season, um, as obviously it comes down to draft day. We'll uh, we'll have to keep up on that because that could be a huge day, and this will be the first, the first. Over, uh, the first first overall pick to be moved in I don't know how long. Joe Thornton would be the only other one off the top of my head. Kovalchuk. Kovalchuk, yep. Kovalchuk was traded. How many firsts have been traded? But I mean, like, okay, right? but no, so, sorry, since... Um, since post-lockout. Yeah, salary cap era. You know what could be true? No, one else, no other big trades have happened. For, you know what might happen? Ooh, you're right. Wow, is yeah. he first He's overall? Rattling out today. Good for you. That's yeah. I I totally forgot. Is he as good as the first might, overall player? No. no, but he was. First there might overall, be two. Yeah. There might be two. Uh, for, like number one overalls move this summer because yeah, as we talked off. about, Oilers. God, they got to do trigger. Yeah, well, we talked about it last week. But but, they, I want, they're getting, what, what's but your, allegedly the trigger that they're going to pull is Nugent Hopkins or Everly. Well, yeah, you got to think. So. Well, Everly. Oh, this sounds so mean. There's so Everly's going to be the add-on. It's going to be like Nuge. I can't see him trading dry sidle anymore. Nope. Taylor Hall could be it. It's going to be Taylor Hall, Nuge, Everly, 
and or Yak. So, it, the, the, there's so many big names in play, like Stamkos, Ladd, Bufflin, uh, Duchesne. Who else is there? Nugent Hopkins, Who's a fun Everly. free agent as well? David I've, Backus is Backus. a free agent. I've heard Ryan Getz's last name thrown around. Oh, yeah, because yep. it's... Oh. They're not playing well. Oh. And on top of that, the contracts that they've signed are contract. terrible. Travis oh. Amnick's floating around. Yep. Yep. It's There's lots of big-time players. Marlo, they... Thornton. Marlo allegedly has been asked to waive his no-trade clause already, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he named he only named three teams that he wanted yeah. to go Rangers, to. Rangers, Kings, and... And, and uh, the, who, San Jose... Oh, no, um, uh, who is the other the California team? Anaheim? Anaheim. Ducks. Yeah. yeah. Really? It's like, oh, you're two rivals and Rangers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good luck doing that. So they pretty much, he pretty much handicapped us. Like oh, can't uh, Kopitar is a free agent, but it's it's rumored that their contra- his contract's pretty much locked up. So, But That's we'll good. confirm that when it happens. In it's, 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 very, it's very interesting, though. There's going to be lots of big names that are... That are moving. Going around. Um, quick thing to talk about before we step into some milestones. Steve Monitor's family suing the NHL. They are. I read an article either today or the other day about uh, about that. Basically, the family of Steve Monitor, they're suing the NHL. He played 10 seasons, played for six teams. Uh, according to the NHL documents, he fought 69 times and had 15 documented concussions. Uh, he was found dead at the age of 35 in his uh, Greater Toronto Area home. And they are charging the league with fa- uh, failure to, pr- uh, to br- provide Steve Monitor with up-to-date medical information about the risks of long-term brain damage. Because that's just the ones that documented. That not doesn't even include the sub-concussive uh, activities. Or even, even, he, like practice. He could have had travel. very, very mild concussions that were never diagnosed. Too. Exactly. Like... It's and and you wouldn't document, would you? I mean, nowadays you might have. You obviously well, have to. Now, today's day and age with concussions is a little different. Yeah, like um, even but Nick Bukestad is out with an uh, with an upper body injury, and he's out indefinitely. And the, Gerard Gallant, the coach for uh, Florida, Florida, they did an interview, and he's like, "Oh, well, he's not even coming on the road trip that I know of. Like, he's no, we're shutting him down." So. Th- to me, I, I can't recall any highlights of him getting like hurt, hit real hard or anything. Well, another, might be a concussion. Another example: after the Brian Bickle hit on Dustin Bufflin, he went back, like Buff went back into the locker room, and then he tried to come back out, and Maurice is like, "No, no, no, you go back," because even though he was fine, it was a hit to the head. They had to give him the protocol, so they they've really cracked down on it. Yeah, you know, What's the league the smartened up. But here's the other thing: is that the Education and the whole research around head injuries has just started to speed up now because we're seeing the long-term effects of it. So we understand, and I understand what Steve Monitor's family is doing, and I sympathize with them. I am very sorry for his death, but I think this is something that can lead into making sure this doesn't happen again. So I don't know if they're going to win, but at least it gets people talking and it might get more research done, more money funded by the NHL to put towards this. So, and it's got all the, well, it's got football talking and it's got hockey talking. Mm-hmm. See, I don't, I can't say, I, I don't know the family, I can't speak for them. I don't see the point in suing the NHL of saying, you didn't give us this, you didn't give him the information. Like, I, I don't see the point in them suing. I don't, I do see the a reason for them to just say, to spread awareness saying, you need to give more you know, I think that yeah. might be you, one of the issues. You need to provide players with up to date mental coverage. Like, and even I've seen videos that when he was uh, when, when, as soon as he was he was out of the league, they didn't follow up with him. They didn't check to see how he was doing. Yeah, they, they need didn't to do that. give him any support like that. And that's a big thing too because those guys spiral down into depression and all this other stuff mm-hmm. when they're when they're on their own. Um, you know, a good a good thing I've a good program I've heard of is. Um, You'll you'll find this interesting uh, wrestling. If a guy has ever been employed for them, if they uh, even if they got fired, if they don't work for the company anymore, if they ever need to go into rehab, if they need help with anything, they pay for it, hundred yeah. percent. And that's it's the, not like the NHL so, short on money. No, so no, I, they can't I, afford. I, to I think do those. they they have to follow these players when they're gone. Yeah, they I have think they're to, ha- you know help make sure they're getting the help they need, not just while they're in the league, but for the rest of their life. It's kind of like what companies do sometimes with long-term employees. It's like, yeah. you made this commitment to us, we can make the commitment to you. And we talked about it once before. Um, moving on, though. Milestones this week, other than the Patrick Kane one. Other than that. Well, actually, Patrick Kane hit... Uh, what did he hit here? I had Patrick Kane. Cab uh, 600 points. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who said wow! it? Wow! Dan, Who said it? Dan, you're fired today. 
Dan is fine. I had a good joke today, and I can't think of it now. Um, um, Patrick Kane and Justin Wyrm hit 600 points. Anze Kopitar hit 400 assists, and I'm going to tweet out this link. If you don't follow this lady on Twitter, you should. I don't know if you guys do. Her Twitter handle is my regular face. Her name's Stephanie, but she tweets out just gifs. Like, if you request her to make a gif, she'll make it. Like, for the NHL. Is it gif or is it gif? Uh, it's, I, I call it gif. People okay. call it gif. I know. I've heard both. I'm just There's a big word for it. I don't know. That I, it's short for something. But <laughs> I'm going to tweet out the link. Anji Kopitar won a face-off. And then it's like cycling back around. He drops his stick and the puck's on his stick. And it literally just caresses off his, or careens off his stick. And whoever the defense, or Brady McNabb, grabs the puck, wrist shots it from the point and goes in. Kopitar didn't even touch the puck, like, with his hand on his stick. His stick passed it for him. And they're like, hey, 400 assists! You did it! But, so Kopitar, 400 assists. And then there's just a bunch of games. Notables would be Braden Holpe, played 200 NHL games. Matt Molson, 500. Nikki Backstrom, 600. Um, Datsuk, 900 games played. Oh, Cronwell, 700. They're, they're trickled in and about. Okay. Oh! I just want to mention this quick. Did you guys watch or see the highlights from Vancouver versus Boston? Oh, yes. Did you see Brandon Prust spear <laughs> Brad Marchand for $5,000? Best, best quote I've ever heard. Yeah, uh, what's the quote? Best money I've ever spent? Yeah. yeah. They have to fix that. In the he's league. gonna get in trouble. I imagine he probably got in trouble for that. Well, he's been fined. He for got sure. fined last year for saying uh, derogatory, or not derogatory, but like offhand comments about a ref after a game. Have you noticed that there's been three or four players this year that have been suspended or fined because they went after Marchand? Like, hit to the head, spear, knee to the head. Like, five, well, it only cost him $5,000. Like, like, Landis Cog got suspended for a hit to the head on him. Someone else got suspended, I think, for going after his head. Like, Is he just that much of a fucking... Well, he's a pest, for sure. It was in Vancouver. Every t- he's only there once a year every time he's there. He does something. He, he scores a goal and gets an assist. He pretends to kiss the cup or he kisses his ring. Like, you know what? He's like, not going the right way to make friends. You know, like, Vancouver. like, to be like, I'm not condoning that in the league, but you know what? He probably deserves every bit of it that he's getting. They have to. He bring, probably brings it on 100 percent himself. They have to bring down harsher but they, penalties, but they do have to crack down because if if you can do that, guys are going to be going back to, you know, the Todd Bertuzzi, Marty McSorley era, where you're you know, going after the guy's head with your stick, and that's just. Five grand? Yeah, I would be. call up my goon from the AHL and say, Marshawn's in the game. Take him out of the game. Dude, I will you pay your fine. Yeah. $5,000? Yeah. That's chump. That's nothing to them. Yeah, yeah it should be Duncan 25. Keith makes three, like, just under $3,300 before taxes a shift. One shift. Brandon Dubinsky in a game makes $36,000 a game. One shift for him. Boom. I would do it. So well, he get yeah. the Crosby cross check. Oh yeah, there you go. Like, That's I mean, what he lost. He lost two games, so yeah. he lost like seventy two grand. Like big deal, right? Ooh. He's making five and a half million dollars. That's insane. I do hoo hoo because to him that's nothing. To me, that is a boatload of money. Yes. But it's just They should start at a hundred thousand dollars. Fines. They lay down the line. Make it yeah. make it more for, than for, that. for that kind of penalty. Make it for spearing somebody. He's laughing in the face of the NHL. Best money ever spent. Yeah. The, he's taunting the his bu- employer well, at you, that point. You can be sure if he does anything again though. Okay. They should get both of them. For spearing to the nuts, or spearing in general, $100,000 fine to start. Yeah. Period. I don't okay. care how much fucking money you make. I don't care if it's your first game, you've only, your salary's for $550,000. $100,000 fine. Boom. Lucic did it twice, like two years ago, I think. He did it to um, Danny tough. DeKaiser. Not tough. Yep. And then he did it to Sergey Yam- yeah. Yamelin, too. Both mm-hmm. of them. In the same year. And he's like, yep. Repeat no offender, hundred thousand, two fifty. Next offense, done for the year. You don't get to play a game. And you don't that is game. that is absolutely well. No, and, and that's the, that's intent to exactly. injury. That yeah. is intent to injury. So that's done. nothing else. Why don't or they, you get a suspension? So, not, so why don't they bring in a, a combo punishment? You get a five game suspension plus you for like you forfeit five games of pay plus you get a hundred a hundred thousand. Yeah, fine. stuff Boom. like that. They have yeah. to talk about this because it's at that point. It's like. When you're getting players like, oh, best money ever spent, it's like, you're being mocked. You're, yeah, they exactly. know it. They have to fix it. And well, obviously, hopefully they'll talk about it. You know. Yeah. Any questions this week? Are we going to... Did you guys see... Oh, the, yes, we do have questions. Did you guys see the James Neal when he got that penalty the other night for <gasps> embellishment? Yes. I did. <laughs> that rough. Get in the fucking box, you fucking... That did he a, say that? Yeah. He said, fuck, you get, you're getting a fucking penalty. Yeah, penalty. Or something like that, yeah. Damn, I'm going to find then, that audio. And then you know what happened? The best part? They scored like five seconds into the yeah. power play. Hilarious. Mm. 
Because he dove. Well, James, James Neal's Neal. got a bad record with uh, that kind of stuff. Okay, so question on the podcast. Yes, we had Stuart on Twitter or Sporty Squirrel ask, what happened, they in followed the, me, actually. What happened to the Ninja Hurdle? Answer on podcast, please. The and they followed Hurdle. it up with, Sean Avery is in jail, so he can't be in the All-Star game. I think <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys say he should be? Uh, we were talking yeah. about like the play. If we're allowed, if you're allowed one player anywhere, NHL junior in the All Star game submitted, and we we're talking about like the weirdest ones, would you bring in anywhere? Anyone I want. Well, no, not like like they have to play hockey professionally. Yeah, like any hockey yeah. player ever. Yeah. Alex Sam. Oh, low blow. How bad is that that no one will pick him up for a million a ca- like a million eight? Mm-hmm. Apparently, he just lost his will to play. Yeah. Anyone I want, eh? Hey, yeah. come, come back to me, I guess. Okay. okay. So Ninja Hurdle. What's up yeah. with him? What happened to the ninja? I don't know. I, Fon- you know what's? I think it's because San Jose is doing well that we're not hearing so much about the bright spots of the team. Like Logan Couture was injured for most of the and season. He's good. He's raring to come back. I think he's come he back. Came back and got a point. Week. There you go. Um, Martin Jones has been nothing but spectacular for them. Yep. So, I, I think the reason why. We haven't heard about them is because there's so many good things in San Jose that they're talking they're about. They're not San focusing Jose. just on Ninja Hurdle. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They're not just focusing on the one bright spot. They're focusing the on the, the many, many bright, bright spots. spots. Exactly. Right. So is that the only question this week? Yeah. Are you want to okay. lead into Warriors? Thank you very much for the question. Well, you know what? I feel like punching somebody, Cameron. I feel like if I was a goaltender in the OHL, I'd punch somebody. Uh, right you sure you want to punch him one or tomahawk them? Did you see the video? You didn't see the video at all? I haven't seen the video. Okay. I thought he punched well, someone. Uh, let's I thought he punched somebody with his blocker. That's no. why. I... Oh, no, no, no. No. Okay, well, I'm incorrect. I will tweet Go the link. I got a vine of it. I'll show you guys after. Mason Blackwood got selected to the World Junior Squad. Uh, and now Team Canada. For Team Canada. So do they not do a training No, nope, they anymore? said they, with goalies, it's too much of a mind game. And goalies is all mental. They want to build the chemistry right away. Mason Blackwood, last week, uh, he's goalie for Barry Cole to draft by New Jersey. No. Oh, really? Yeah. Why didn't Winnipeg draft him? Because we only draft Barry Colts. Good, great point. I'm not sure. I'm sure they drafted someone else. Yeah. Uh, however, he was playing a game last week, and he literally, like, from up top, slash a player, oh, we call him. Like, up oh. from up here. Who's this? Jeez. Mason Blackwood. He's a goalie. Um, and uh, he got selected to the World Junior Selection Camp. Him and, oh, who's the other goalie? No, three of them are going. To, well, now they have to name three because Mason Blackwood got uh, suspended a uh, junior hockey for eight games. So he's serving the six games, and he'd be allowed to play exhibition because they're not officially they're not official sanctioned games. And then his his suspension will carry over into World Juniors because it's yeah. a sanctioned game. He would miss the first two games. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the decision he made has severely injured his ability to possibly play in the World Juniors. I would keep him off this team at this this point. If he's going to make decisions like that, do you want a goalie like that in World Juniors where you have to gel right away? He's already gone two games. Yeah. By that point, your first game, game one, is against your biggest rival, Team USA. A team that leaves you Jack need... Roslevic and Kyle Connor off. Said and team. Eric Foley. What and the Eric piss? Foley. And, and Alex Tuck? And, and Jeremy Draco? What they, the they piss really, is going on? Essentially what they said were like, we only want... Players that are going to be drafted this year. We don't want currently drafted players, I guess. Yeah, we don't want a player that's already played for our team. Yeah. We don't want players that are, two of them, Rosovic and Connor, who are leading their teams as freshmen in college hockey. In points. Both of them, separately. I, uh, I, I, when I saw this news, like, it broke last night or a couple days ago, but I only realized it this morning. I was like, how come no one's said anything about Kyle Connor or Rosovic? Last week, we were talking about, oh, they're definitely on the team. They have to be. Why? Well, they're, they're, they're two first round picks. Not that you're guaranteed to make the team, but just shows you how stupid Ron Wilson really is. It's Ron Wilson, and Chris Shelios, who got basically handpicked the team. Correct, and they want to build like a worker type attitude instead of the elite finesse type players. Why uh, you Connor need a little and... bit of both of those to win games? Oh, remember when Canada couldn't win a gold medal for a bunch of years? You know what they did? They picked worker types instead. This year we're like. Or la- last year, they're like, we're just going to pick the best players. We're going to build best players, and we're going to take some best players who know how to hit and play D. We'll put them on the third line. We're going to beat you with speed. Yeah. That's how you win games in junior hockey. In junior hockey, it's sure, there's going to be big hits in, like, defensive game a bit. It's a turn and no burn defense. game. You know. We know. There's like, no. There's not nearly as much defense as you see. And this is what happened. Like, I'm assuming Chelios played junior. Yes. I'm assuming that Ron Wilson is coached junior. But these are guys... 
that when they were playing and when Ron Wilson was coaching, the game was different. It's take the your game, lunch, pay, lunch pail, go to work, win those puck battles in the corner. Exactly. The game has evolved so much, even the last five years, to a more quicker game, especially junior. I remember watching the Brennan Weekings when they came to Winnipeg to play um, the Calgary Hitman for the playoffs a couple years ago. And then watching, I think it was London play Windsor. By the way, Windsor Spitfire third jerseys, unbelievable. They're the old Jets jerseys with a Windsor Spitfire logo. Looks so sick. I digress. Um, and the game, from what I remember from that, is just so different. The biggest thing about junior hockey that makes it so exciting is the fact that these players aren't all elite. So there's a lot of turnovers, and you've got to have the speed to go and get the turnovers. Right? So defenseman bobbles the puck at the blue end. Boom, that winger's gone on a breakaway. And that's what makes... Junior hockey. How so did Team Canada win last year? Exactly. Max Domi, Anthony Duclair, Connor McDavid, player Sam, Sam Reinhardt was on the team. Yeah, yeah. Turn and burn, guys. Just they pick up the puck, go, just go. Don't even worry. Don't even worry about the two don't on one. You don't even you. need to pass on the two on one. Just get that puck off. Exactly. That guy, they're gonna kick it out to the the slot. Boom, goal every time. Every time. That is how junior hockey is played now. Back when Brandon was around, yeah, there was a lot of those turn and go plays, but it was more try to be more systematic. Now it's Skill. If you've got the skill and you've got the speed, you do it. We're not going to even try to set anything up. Like in the you zone. said, skill guys excel in that league. Mitch Marner has how many points? Forty six in like twenty three games or yeah, something insane stupid. like that. Twenty three games. There's a I player, um, Travis Konechny. He's got like I think he's got like six goals and like thirty some odd assists. He's got I believe he's got I think he's second behind Marner in points or third. It. And these guys are tiny, skilled guys. They're fast guys. That's all they are. Mm-hmm. Well, not that's that's what they are. That's what they are. Yeah. But yeah. So uh, uh, Mason Blackwood made a weird decision, or uh, heat of the moment. Rarely is exactly. angry. Uh, in Team USA, um, there is no other word to describe what it is for a snub. I'll tweet an article from Yahoo. I read it. Uh, all the gentlemen, and he just broke down like the four very interesting snubs in Braco, Connor, mm-hmm. Rosovic, and Tuck. He yeah. just said, "There's no other way around describing that it's it's a snub because that's exactly what it is." And he said, "Like I don't good. even know if it's biased towards their teams or not." He said, "These players didn't do anything to Team USA to piss them off, not a la Josh Hosang. Did he even get named? Actually, no. Wow. Other thing, um, Nikolai Ehlers named to team Team Denmark or allegedly. Yeah, he did. He was okay. There. Do you let him go as a Winnipeg Jet? Okay. Yeah. Do I let him go if I'm?" The one they have? Yes. No. And why not? Well, number one, you have to fill that hole. I don't think there's anybody good enough to fill that hole right now. I mean, realistically, who are you going to move? You're going to move Adam Lowry back up to the third line because he was there and he didn't. And he did, he's, he hasn't played well he's this in a year. Slump, yeah. You know who are you going to move up? And Anthony Peluso has been playing well the last ten games. Are you going Are you going to move him up to the third line? Probably you, not. You could call up Patan. You could. But then you're gonna. But then when Ehlers comes back, you you're sending with him right down. back down. Exactly. So I mean, and I think Ehlers would benefit more from playing with the Jets. The Jets are starting to go back to the way they played last year. The last seven or eight games they played very well, even though they've only won maybe half of them. I think he benefits more from staying. Okay. There's a whole another argument because I think he's being wasted on the line that he's on right now. Who's he playing with right now? Thorburn and Bermistrov, which to me is a joke. That that's that those two other two guys are even on the third line to begin with. Because I would get rid. Of, well, I have so many things I could say. I where just, Dan trails off, I will uh, say it's just uh, to his point. No, I, yeah, I, 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 you don't think he I, should. I don't think you should. Okay, no. I there's two. I'll say both. I think he should go because. It would build confidence. He'd be a leader. But where I don't think he should go, obviously I do believe his talent's being wasted on the third line right now. However, I wouldn't send him with the World Juniors because only now is he starting to shake off his bad habits that he learned in junior where we're not seeing him circle back anymore, really. I haven't seen it. They're starting to shake the rust of junior where his bad habits... He goes back, bad habits might start to trickle back in again because he's going to be... He's the guy on Denmark. And so that would be my counter argument. I would love to see him there, but not to. I don't want to stunt his what he's already done to this point in the and season. You, and just before Greg goes, you have to keep in mind because I heard this. This makes total sense to me. The first twelve games of the year, fifteen games of the year, yeah, the first 10, 15 games of the year, he was on fire. He was ripping up like he was one of the highest scoring rookies in the league until other teams went. 
holy shit, this guy's really, this kid's good. We have to guard him. We Meet him to, at the blue line. <laughs> we have to watch him. So, I mean, teams are watching him now. So that's probably why he slowed down a little bit because he has to adjust now. So that says even more to him that teams are like, you know what, that's the guy you got to watch, you know. Aside from maybe Wheeler, that's the guy you got to watch out for. You also got to think though, so. with Ehlers there, it makes guys like Shifley and Wheeler that much more dangerous. Because it opens up spots. Because they also have to think about them when they are sure. not on the ice. Um, the only reason why I think he should go is like Cam said to build confidence. It's for six days, like that he'd be gone. Six. Well, he he might only miss two three games and that's bad. Okay, oh, the last yeah. game is New Year's Eve. Are you playoffs, tell- though. It, Denmark it ends, is not making hold playoffs. Hold on. It ends January 5th, hypothetically, if they go to the gold medal game. Yeah. So, but he has to go for training 20- camp, too. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Does, so does he be, have to? Or? He'd be gone for th- like three weeks is what he'd be gone for. Okay. That, uh, that's that's, not that's bad. a bit of a shame. I was saying if they, if they are able to let him go Christmas Eve and get him back January 2nd, why not let it happen? See if it... And then you bring in J.C. LePond to your team. And then shuffle everyone up. Shuffle everyone up. So who moves up? Peluso? I would say Larry's got to be the first call. Even yeah. though he's been snuffing yeah, it up no, a I bit. I agree. I agree. I would say you got to. You I know. would, personally, what I'd like to do is, d- or do Cop, LePond, Peluso line with Thorburn, Lowry, and Brumistrov. That way. It's, I mean, I mean, with the Jets now, they're, they're struggling to, like, the... Wait, is Lemieux going to be on... The junior team? He didn't get invited, no, sir. Okay. What we'll do, just to, we'll follow up on this until the juniors happen. Yeah. Once they announce the teams, we'll just name the notable, we'll name Team Canada, and then we'll name the notable players, because there are quite a few notable players. Just one off the top, or two off the top of my head. Both Nylander brothers are named to World Juniors. Uh, I'm kind of hoping Alex gets sent. Do I think they will? Probably not, because he's leading the AHL in scoring. You mean William? William, my bad. Alex is the other one. I like they will let him go. But anyways, we'll name that we'll name the noble players on those teams. And obviously if if Ehlers does if they do decide to let him go, we'll obviously report on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so last thing before we sign off, the election. Okay, so let the, me have the it. Bottom, the bottom five Has it changed eight. at all? A little bit. Let me have it. Who's twenty six? Toronto. Okay. Calgary. Carolina, Edmonton, Columbus. So the two teams that Wait, have... Columbus sh- is dead last? Yep. And they're here tomorrow? Yep. And Predictions for the game? But no. But out three weeks. Ooh. Two And the two teams that have shuffled are Anaheim and Colorado are now out of that bo- out of that basement. Yeah, hey. good. They shouldn't be there. But the funny thing is... You know who's is slipping closer? Philly. Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Oh, really? I like how you're like, yeah, Dan shows the, eye, the, the eyebrows and then just does a circle around his chest. Although I do, I do want to say one thing. Chicago is 10th. In league standings right now, they are only ten points out of last place. Yeah, what well, the skills? The Jets are literally three po- three three wins away from being like third in the central, or fourth. Three wins away from that, and probably four wins away from the bottom. From the bottom. Well, hey, we're, everything is so tight right now; it's ridiculous. It, where we people start to break off is after Christmas break. And you know what? This is what I was going to. The say Jets this. are better than five Pacific teams. That's why I would also keep Ehlers because the Jets are stumbling right now to get momentum. They're finally playing He's well. He's one of the guys who... Um, this next month could make or break their season, so I think you have to keep him. They are tied with the second place team in the Pacific right now. Yes, I know. <laughs> oh, that is if we still went 1-8 to eight in the Western Conference playoffs, the Jets would make the playoffs. <laughs> um, fun fact about Ehlers to actually help him stay on, uh, stay on the Jets, which is probably why they keep him. He leads a league in offensive zone entries with the puck in the really? NHL. In the NHL. And he's sixth in, as of, this is a couple days ago, he's sixth leaving the defensive zone with the puck. Normally, he's got so much. <sighs> he's first. Number two is Johnny Gaudreau. Number three is Jack Eichel. Can you get, okay, quickly, am I crazy, but would you not move Andrew Ladd off the first line and put Ehlers with Wheeler and Little and just let him see what he can do? Sure. Why, Why wouldn't you? You might be you? showcasing Andrew Ladd right now. <sighs> Although you know what you get with Andrew Ladd. You crash and bang, meat and taters, go to the net. Crash and bang, He needs go a to the skill net, guy on his line. Right off the coattails of the two guys you're playing with, because that's what he's done. I'm just and imagine, imagine like, he's the skill level. Like, like imagine Andrew the Ladd is a solid hockey player, great leader. But I mean, the, Nick Ehlers needs to be. Ugh, it's just, it just, it's frustrating to watch him. Do you know what I've noticed about this year's 
um, NHL. Not how crazy close it is, but the fact that I'm in awe of how one division in a conference is that good, while the other division in that conference is that bad. Like, I'm looking at standings right now, I'm like, wow, Winnipeg is better in 8th place. The other teams behind them are all in the Pacific Division except for one, Colorado. Like, how nice is it for teams to who's play? The o- who's the only Pacific team ahead of us, L.A.? No, it's both San Jose and L.A. are. Oh, and but San Jose's got a game in hand. That's the only reason why they're ahead of us. Is they're 14, so 13 in So, same amount of points. Same amount of points. Same with Vancouver's. Vancouver's got the same amount of points, but less games played. And they've got eight overtime losses. And that's why it, it's crazy to say, like, the Jets have, like, they're doing bad, but they're still right in the playoff race. They're like, 500. They're not doing, like... Okay, well, compare it Everyone picked them to be, like, playoff team for sure. And they're not right now. But it's so, because you look at all the other teams they're playing against. It's like, it's just, Nashville is 14-9-5 right now. That's retarded. That's ridiculous. It's unacceptable. Crazy. Gary Bettman's NHL. That's what he wanted. Hey, you know what? I'd far rather have this than what's going on in the NBA right now with one team like at the top. And How about the NFL? Team. There's like, what, two good teams in the whole league and everyone yeah. else is like, yeah, you can you, you, you on, suck. On any given, day, any given day they can win, on any, any given day they can That's lose. ridiculous. Yep. Hey, Eagles, yeah, we'll, we'll give up 45 points to Miami and Tampa Bay and then we'll beat the Patriots. It's fine. It Thanks, makes Vikings. No you sense. didn't lose me forty bucks right. this week, you dicks. Come on. Okay. Closing words, Cameron. Two things. Oh, sorry. Oh, why? No. Danny, let us out. Okay. Well, a, I was gonna go. My all star, my fantasy all star pick is Patrick Stefan. He's the best player ever. Um, <laughs> the greatest number one draft pick ever. And he ever. gets to wear the Thrasher shoes. Oh, Alex Dag. And I had a trivia trivia question. I thought of when you guys were talking about. Uh, Team USA, what's the last NHL team that Chris Chelios, Chelios played for? A lot of Thrashers. You got it. Really? Yep. yep. Did you guys ever see the video clips of Chris Chelios when he was in the a- AHL? Those are just... With Chicago Wolves? Yeah. Oh, my God. They're just vicious. There's this one guy who's mic'd up playing him, and he's like, Get out of here, you old man. Come on, let the kids play. And, like, just, like, Beacon, Chris Chelios. And Chris Chelios is just, like, super tanned up. Just like, I'm Chris Chelios. I remember because he played with Zach Bogosian. And they said that Bogo was born the year after Chrishell started playing in the NHL, I think. And they played together. That's messed up. I just thought of it while I was... Yeah. While you guys were talking. Well, that's everything for episode 70. This one's for you, Brain Holpy. Yes. Hope you enjoyed it.